Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're actually going to do something a little bit more domestic, because for a while I have intended to decorate the interior of this house and the blacksmith's house, which we might not get to today, depending on how in-depth we get with the interior details that we want to add. But I think our starter house is definitely the best place to begin when we're talking about how to decorate decorate an interior. Up until this point, we've been using this space very practically. It's used for storage, it's used for crafting, it's used for things like brewing. We have a bunch of storage space down here in the cellar, which we've already started to do a little bit of detail with. This wood pile over here isn't exactly a practical way to store wood, it's more of an aesthetic thing. But inside here, we don't really have a great deal of things that make this look like a lived-in space. It is primarily a functional one. We're going to change that today, and that's going to involve doing a little bit of creative rearranging of the stuff we already have in here, adding a few things, and deciding what exactly we want from the space. Now, to begin with, this whole area is already fairly rustic feeling, so we're not going to be splitting this up into a bunch of different rooms, but I think two separate rooms, maybe divided along the line here next to the door, is going to make sense, because you would want one space to be more of a workspace and another space to be more of a living area. I'm going to take out these furnaces from this corner, especially since we now have furnaces up and running in the blacksmith's area, and I have still been using these to make a little bit of stuff. We've still been cooking food and whatnot in here, but I do want to stash some of that stuff away, remove all of this, probably move the candles and stuff as well. And as we go, we are going to be paying attention to things like lighting, because right now we have a bunch of torches up in here, a lantern in the center of the space, and those candles that I removed were lit, so we are decreasing the amount of light that was here, and we want to make sure that this whole thing stays fairly mob safe. Now, in my experience, with a small area like this, there are a couple of things we can do to make the room feel a little bit larger, which is difficult in Minecraft when, even though these houses look quite big from the outside, the interiors feel fairly small, and that's really because every block in Minecraft is effectively a meter thick. It's the width of the player. And so while we think of these as being quite large rooms, they're actually relatively small in terms of the other details we can build into the space. And this space is probably going to feel even smaller once I build a partition across the room here. This is going to be our room divider, <laughs> effectively, where we're going to have the two rooms separate out. And we are probably going to change the pattern of the floor upstairs by putting in this wall, because it involves swapping out a bunch of the blocks up here for full dark oak blocks, so the top of the room feels sealed off. Even though this house is seven blocks wide on the interior, we also have the door recessed inwards by one block, which means this area here is actually a six by six wall, and putting a single wide door in any part of this wall is going to feel a little bit awkward. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical, the door can be off to one side slightly, but I think widening this out into a double door is also going to make the space still feel a little larger. We don't want to end up cutting things off and having everything feel too claustrophobic. I'm also going to try and reclaim this area over here a little bit, which is currently taken up by the spiraling staircase that leads down to the basement, and we are going to cover that up with a series of spruce trap doors. The spruce trap doors will blend in with the floor a little bit here, but but we can have those attached to the sides of these solid blocks here as they go down the stairs. And that will allow us to still have access to the staircase because a player can fit into a block space where there is a trap door occupying part of it, but you'll also be able to close up all of those and just walk over this as though it were a solid floor. Naturally, we could just replace this with a single ladder down to the basement and we would reclaim a lot of floor space that way, just condense it down into a single block in one corner, but I kind of like the idea that this whole section of the room unfolds into the entrance to our basement. So that seems like a sensible thing to do. I'm also going to head over to our sugarcane farm, grab a bunch of sugarcane to turn into paper and convert some of that into books to make bookshelf blocks. Because when you're building in a small space like this, when you're building on a relatively small scale, one of the things you can do to add detail is find the more detailed blocks that exist in Minecraft's block palette. And in this case, I think bookshelves are going to be an ideal example of that. Take, for example, the average wood plank block. So spruce planks here, for example. There's a lot of detail in the texture, but it's all one color, and it all just feels like 
a single piece of material. Meanwhile, if you place down a bookshelf, it feels like a piece of material that's been hollowed out and replaced with lots of little objects, and I find that that's a really good way of working detail into a space like this. So I'm going to set up a few bookshelves around here in this corner, making it feel like this corner can be used for more storage as well as decoration. In between those bookshelves, we can put in objects like spruce slabs here to make it feel like there is a table almost connected to these two bookshelves. We're going to add a flower pot on the top there, and we can put back the red tulip that I had in here previously. Or if we want an additional splash of color, I might go back to my sniffers and see if we can plant and harvest any torch flowers. Since the torch flowers are a newer plant, I haven't really got around to using them all that much yet, but I think they make for a really nice splash of colour, and there's some colours here that aren't already represented in the bookshelves, so it adds a lot to this space. In the corner here, we might put one of the decorated pots as well. I don't know if I have a blank one around anywhere or any more pot sherds that I feel like I can add in here. Let's see if I got any here in the precious materials. How about shelter? That one feels thematically appropriate to the space, and since we're only going to be seeing one face of it, the other three sides can be made of brick. We'll pop that here in the corner like so, with the shelter pattern facing outwards. I'm also going to change up where I had the bed. Previously, it was by this window, but it feels like we get a bit more privacy if I put the bed in this corner. We're going to put it one block out from the wall, and that's partly because we can add a headboard to the bed here, and we can even add a footboard if we want to using an oak sign, just attaching that to the foot of the bed. The oak probably goes best with the bed frame, the sort of default color of wood that the Minecraft bed uses. But around the outside of this, I think I'm going to put a little bit of decor just to make sure it feels a little bit cozier in this corner of the room. I'm going to do a three block high section of spruce logs either side. We're going to take down these two maps, one of which I believe is locked and shows the area before we had done any building. So this area looks a little bit different now that we built the blacksmith's house to the south of us and so forth. We're going to add some dark oak stairs to either side of this just to frame out the top of it. And in the center, we're going to put a painting. Paintings are another really great way of adding a little bit of sub block detail into a space and they can be placed on any wall. Although when you place them, you'll find that they default to the largest possible size that you can place them. At least that's the case on Java Edition. I think on Bedrock Edition it might be a little bit more randomized, but you'll find there are a variety of paintings in the game, some of them of convenient sizes, like this one where it can fit into a 2 by one space, some of which are almost too large, <laughs> although we can find some spaces to use those a little bit later. But if you want to work with a specific scale of painting, it's usually a good idea to block in the area around it. That way, if you end up placing a painting like so, for example, you're guaranteed to get a 2x2 two two painting. It will try and fit the largest possible painting inside of here, and you can cycle through each one until you get a design that you're looking for. There are two different 2x1 two paintings like this. This is one of them, and the guy with the walking stick is the other one. I prefer that one. It feels a little bit more, I don't know, classy than the other design, but that feels like a nice painting to have over the headboard of our bed over here. And I think I'm going to put a barrel next to this as sort of a combination of a bedside table and storage, because having a chest here would be kind of cool, but that wouldn't let us put candles on top of it. So we're going to place a couple of candles on there, we'll relight those with a flint and steel, and that can provide a cozy ambience to the bedroom whilst making sure that it's not in the full light of a torch or a lantern. There we go, we'll grab the flint and steel here, we'll light that, and we'll pop the flint and steel in the barrel, because we might need to light a few more candles in the near future. I also kind of like the idea of partitioning the bed space off for even more privacy, so that anybody who is visiting and walking through the door didn't immediately see the area where you sleep. And for that, we're going to grab a bit more mangrove wood, because doors don't just have to be used as functional objects, they can also be used for decoration. We're going to put a series of doors around the outside of our bed space like so, to give the impression there's a folding screen here. The hinges of the door even allow for it to look like the door could fold up in different ways, and that would allow us to almost put the folding screen away if we needed a bit more use of this space. Unfortunately, it's not really possible to do that with Minecraft's mechanics, but it's a nice way of partitioning off the bed area from the outside whilst not making it a whole separate room. As I mentioned before, we're going to put a chest in this corner, which unfortunately does hide a bit of the shelter pattern, but you do still kind of see it on the corner there. And in this corner, I want to put some shelves above the window, but I don't necessarily want those to be full slabs since that will cut off a fair amount of the window. So instead, I think we're going to put a series of dark oak 
trap doors around there with a single spruce slab in the corner just so it feels a little bit more supported in there but I think on top of those we can add the clusters of amethyst crystals that you find inside of geodes and I've silk touched a few of those if we head back to the geode farm there are a couple of smaller amethyst clusters that we can grab before they grow to their full size so we can add a variety of different sizes of crystals to make it look like there's almost a crystal collection being kept up here out of harm's reach I'm going to attach a lantern to the underside of this slab here since we're able to since that's the bottom half slab of the block above and I'm really happy with the look of this corner now it looks nice and detailed nice and bright it's got a bunch of color and these are really the two core tenets of building anything on a small scale in interiors it's detailed blocks and sub block details things like flower pots amethyst buds lanterns anything that looks a little bit smaller than a block and whether it takes up a full block space or a smaller part of a block it will make it feel like the player's scale is a little bit more realistic it doesn't feel like everything is suddenly one meter wide or as tall as the player is we've also made really good use of the space by having the trap doors here in the floor leading down to the basement but also closable if we want to stand here and look out the window access the storage from a convenient distance or admire our crystal collection one thing to look for when it comes to adding sub block details though is that some blocks have a certain amount of detail at different rotations take the cartography table here as an example every time we place down this block it's always placed facing in the same direction regardless of which direction we're looking at which is different from some other blocks let's say a blast furnace for example every time you place this down it's going to be facing you the grill on the front of the blast furnace ends up facing towards the player when you place it cartography tables though are kind of locked to the grid regardless of which way round I place place this I'm not always going to have the same face of the table facing me in fact the globe here on the corner is always pointing in a kind of southwesterly direction so if I wanted to rely on having that globe visible at some point it's no good me placing it up against this wall for example because the face of the planks here is the plainest side and that's always going to be facing to the north so instead what we're going to do is replace the smithing table here with the cartography table so we can take advantage of seeing those details and having that globe and the map and the little kind of roll of scrolls down here where the other maps are like folded up it's all unrelated to the functionality but for aesthetics we want it to appear on this side of the block in this room we're going to stick to having a series of smaller tables we're going to have a corner table kind of thing here with two stairs facing inwards and a slab connecting them we can also add a slab here and a stair right here and once we add the doors in here these are going to frame the doors quite nicely whilst giving us surfaces to put a few more details on like a candle or two by the door so we can get rid of this torch that's stuck up here with seemingly nothing attaching it to the wall of course now we're farming honeycomb by the bucket load over here in our little bee enclosure we have an absolute abundance of candles all we need for those is a little extra string and we happen to know where some cave spider spawners are in a distant abandoned mine shaft so maybe we'll return there in a future episode and turn that into a wholesale string farm either way the candles over here by the doorway can be lit as well for a nice ambient light as we walk in the lantern over here is going to cover most of this area anyway but the candles are just a nice aesthetic addition once again a sub block detail another thing I've really been neglecting to use up until this point is wool carpet so we're going to grab a couple of the more kind of functional colors from around here I'm going to grab some gray wool and some brown wool the brown is going to look really good as a doormat just inside the door but I think the gray wool always makes for some really nice interior rug material and we could end up putting some gray carpet in this area around the bed but there are a couple of problems with that mainly that the carpet will not occupy a space that's already occupied by another block namely this sign in the case of the foot of the bed and of course we have the door here that's taking up part of that block and can't really sit on top of this trap door because it would break every time the trap door opened so I think perhaps having a little gray rug in between these two rooms is going to make sense I'll grab a little bit more gray wool and we'll make that happen another thing you should be aware of when placing carpets around a bed is that the game will always look for an empty solid block in order to place the player on once you've slept for the night and so if it doesn't find any valid spaces like that around your bed there's always a chance that if you die and respawn or if you return from the end dimension later once we've done that 
you'll find that you don't always spawn at your bed because there are obstructions around it preventing the game from respawning you there. So you should always try and leave a couple of spaces around your bed free of obstructions. And that's why we're not doing too much decoration around the bed area, making sure there's enough floor space for us to get up in the morning. Now, either side of the doorway here, I'm actually going to break out a couple of blocks and we're just going to add a quick bit of detail to the wall here by stripping these logs. Kind of goes hand in hand with the wood theme we have elsewhere in the build and adds this two-tone structure to the wall here, which I actually quite like. We're going to convert some of the wood that we've brought with us into a couple more oak trap doors, and we're going to frame out the doorway using those. We'll put two coming down either side like this, and we can close those so that they are flush with the wall. I might actually swap these two dark oak blocks for some dark oak stairs to make it look a little bit more like a recessed doorway here. And of course, we can make the doors out of oak so that they have that natural oak door window in them, and that will allow us to see through into this space if we don't just leave the doors open permanently. For our last few touches in here, we're going to add a painting over the top of here. And once again, there are a lot of these two wide and one high paintings to cycle through. So we can try a few of those until we get the one we want. That looks quite nice. And then we're going to add a flower pot over here in the corner so we can reposition our red tulip there. Although I am kind of thinking we need to have a crafting table in this space. I tend to pop in here to do the occasional bit of crafting and then finding this one over here in the alcove seems like, I don't know, a little bit arduous. So we're going to remove that slab there and instead we're going to craft a, oh no, we've got one in our inventory already. We're going to pop another crafting table in there and that makes quite a nice decorative corner table surface anyway. We can still right click on that outside of the flower pot to get access to the crafting interface. I've also got a bit of iron with me because you can actually make pressure plates out of iron as well. They have slightly different capabilities when it comes to redstone circuitry, but what I like to use them for is as though there's a ream of paper just kind of resting on a table surface nearby. And if we wanted to put a book and quill in an item frame nearby or something, it would give the impression at least that you've got something to write with around here. Now moving into the adjoining room, I think we need to take the stone cutter out of here, at least so we can see that crafting table over there in the alcove, and I might move the stone cutter downstairs to down here by the wood pile where I think I had it previously, where it makes sense for a circular saw to be down here so that we could cut up some wood with it, theoretically, even though it's a stone cutter. Now despite the cauldron being kind of linked to brewing, it's actually nowhere near as useful as having a single water source nearby, but I actually want to move this water source, so I am just going to remove that. We're going to take out those two trap doors. Remove the cauldron entirely. We can just stash that in here for now. And even though the chest is up against here, we can always waterlog the block for this trap door if I shift click that. And that's going to still look like there's a spruce bucket of sorts here waiting to deliver water for our brewing stand. That allows us to turn this corner here into an area with a little bit of comfortable seating. And what I find a lot of people doing when it comes to putting chairs in the game is simply putting some stairs down because it looks like the kind of thing that you could sit on. You know, it looks like it's got a, a backrest and a seat there for the player but naturally when you are actually using any of this stuff as seating in your world it doesn't quite feel right you've sort of got to crouch on or in front of some of these chairs and they don't really act exactly the way you would want them to so instead we're going to remove those and i'm going to teach you a little trick involving minecarts since minecarts are something you can sit in they kind of make the ideal seats and if we wanted to we could simply put a rail down here that we could place a minecart on remove the rail and then you'd have something that you could sit in, although it always feels like you are sort of chest high to the table and your head is barely peeking over. So we're going to make ourselves a bit of a booster seat. For that, we're going to put a trap door on the floor, a trap door next to it, as though the chair has an armrest of sorts. And then we're also going to create a backrest for the chair over here by creating a couple more spruce trap doors. We'll have to remove the torch over here for this, so I'm going to move that to some available floor space for now. But this can be the back of a nice tall chair. And all we need to do in order to get the minecart to sit on top of this trap door is place some rails on top of the table here. Place the minecart down, nudge the minecart forward ever so slightly, and it rolls into position. We're going to do the same the opposite way around as well, like so. And that actually gives us a minecart that we can sit in and look out across the table at what feels like a reasonable height. Give or take the fact that I've got a shield and a pickaxe in my hand. One more trap door over here in the corner to imitate a backrest for this chair as well, and we have a nice little dining set here. Meanwhile, over in this corner, I'm actually going to reinstate one of the things that I think we'll be using frequently in here, since we only need it really one at a time, and that is the smoker. I've been using that to cook some baked potatoes whilst my cows are busy 
breeding back up to a full herd. So I'm going to create a little surround for the smoker over here using some cobblestone. To make it look a little bit more like a hearth with a chimney of sorts, we're going to put two cobblestone blocks either side of that. We're going to have two cobblestone stairs facing in towards the center. We're going to attach a cobblestone wall to the top of the smoker as though that hole in the top actually leads out to a chimney or a flue of sorts. And we're going to remove this block of the wall here and pop a wall in there, making it look like it actually connects to something that might lead to the top of the house. And if you want to, you can add a chimney to the roof of this house, which we didn't include in the original design, but it might be worth adding one of those in now that we've got a smoker here in a sort of hearth situation. Naturally, with the cartography table over here, it makes sense for us to have some dark oak furniture adjoining that, so I'll whip up a quick table made out of a stair and a slab. We can add a couple of things to that as well, perhaps some more candles, which is why I brought more string with me. I think for the sake of lighting up this room a little bit more adequately, even though the smoker will provide some light while it's on, we want to make sure that it is going to be nice and light in here, even when the smoker is not smoking anything. So we're going to add some candles on top of the wall next to the smoker and some candles on this table here, which will provide a lovely ambient light to the room, along with maybe a little bit of light coming from this candle over here. And while it risks making the space feel a little bit more crowded, I do think a central table would be really nice for this floor space. It could be a work table, it could be a larger dining table for when there are more than just two people in the house, I don't know. We could kind of make up whatever story we want for it, but if we want to circle around like this, we can actually get the stairs to join with a corner stair on every angle. Simply change the angle you're looking at and place the stair adjacent to the stair you just placed every time you turn 90 degrees and you end up with a table that looks actually pretty neat. And we could put a couple of chairs around that if we want to using stairs or whatever other materials you've got handy, but I think this would be a perfect place to pop down a couple of item frames or things that make it look like we're tinkering away at something. And the cool thing about item frames is that the items in them can be rotated so you can have your sword perpendicular to the table maybe we'll pop another one down here next to it and perhaps we're using a sword to carefully cut up some leather or something like that having used dark oak trapdoors for some shelving above the windows in this room i think we'll probably do the same in this room over here and this will probably just have a couple of trinkets and bits and pieces on it nothing that we're really going to use for any serious storage since we already have plenty of that for our potion brewing supplies we could maybe add another couple of flower pots on top of these and maybe put a torch flower in one of them as well just to continue the theme of having those in here as a pop of color meanwhile over the door here i think we'll take advantage of the space to put a little bit more storage in here we're going to have to make sure that it's flat across the edge there so that we can actually fit something in there and Anything we place too close to these parts of the ceiling where the ceiling comes in a little bit is going to risk not being able to open if it's a regular chest, although barrels might work up there pretty well. I think we'll want this to have a gentle sort of arch to it, so I think we'll probably break out a couple more of the spruce planks and turn those into stairs and slabs. And now that night is falling, we can kind of see where the dark spots in the room are, and this corner is lacking a little light, so I think we are going to remove this yellow candle and just put in a couple of the regular cream-coloured candles so that we can add a little bit of light to this darker area. I've got a couple more things that I might want to add to this area, but they're actually things we haven't encountered yet, so I'm going to wait until we get to some of those and make Maybe we'll talk about them a little later. But for now, I think you'll agree that our little home space has absolutely transformed. We have a cozy living area with a bed right here and over into more of like a dining room work area, then we can have a much more relaxing time imagining living out our lives here in this little Minecraft house. And of course, you can tailor some of this to whatever kind of house you build. If you wanted to build something more modern, then you could figure out how to make something look a bit more like you had a big flat screen TV inside of here or, you know, an office setup or something like that. But here, we're kind of sticking to a more rustic theme with a slightly more simple feeling way of life. And I think this captures that pretty well. Now, it feels like the living floor of our house really matches the workshop and storage area down here. And maybe we could do a little bit more work up in the attic to spruce up the way this feels. After all, right now, it is mostly the home to a handful of bees and one enchanting setup. But the blacksmith's house also needs a little bit of work doing on it, so maybe we'll continue to tackle this as an ongoing project. There was one detail that was suggested in the comments section that I really wanted to add, though, so excuse me while I get to that, and we'll do a little redstone tutorial here. This idea came from the comments section on the video in which we built this blacksmith's house, and it came from Wit's Wolf 
92. So thank you so much for this idea. I'm going to try my best to do it justice. Witzwolf suggested it could be fun to add a little redstone gizmo that moves the hay bale in the chimney up and down so that it smokes more while our automatic furnace array here is active. Right now, if you look at the smoke coming from the chimney, it has a hay bale underneath it, which causes the smoke to rise a lot higher than it does from just a standard campfire on any other block. So we are going to install a mechanism using a sticky piston, which moves the hay bale up and down below the campfire. And once the hay bale is removed from the campfire, the smoke will not be nearly as active. First of all, we're going to craft a sticky piston, which I'm not sure if I've used at all in this series yet. Sticky pistons are simply pistons which can pull blocks as well as push them. And they're crafted using an existing piston and a slime ball. So we just need one of those, some redstone dust, some observers, and some note blocks. Note blocks are actually really useful at passing signal after an observer has detected a change because all that happens is the note block becomes powered very quickly once and that's something that can be detected by another observer without the observer noticing two block state changes and firing twice. I'll give you a quick example here using this note block setup. If I right click on this note block to change its pitch, you'll notice that both of these note blocks ended up triggering in sequence. And that is because the observer detects me changing the state of this note block, changing the note that it is tuned to and passes a redstone signal down the line. A furnace switching on when it starts smelting something also counts as a block state change, which can be detected by an observer. Right now, there are hoppers extracting the smelted items and also inputting fuel and whatever items we want to smelt. We have the furnaces arranged in a chain side by side, so we can't really use any of those faces. We could remove this block here so that we could see the sides of these furnaces and put an observer facing into one of those. But honestly, that involves changing the shape of the chimney. And I kind of like the way this looks from the outside. So instead, what we're going to do is take out this block here. So that can be the area where the observer detects the change in the furnace. We're going to have a note block next to that to transfer transfer the first part of the signal, and then we're going to extend a chain of observers and note blocks upwards, starting here and going up one more, then we'll go up one from here. Once we're clear of the rails and the other circuitry, our set of observers and note blocks can come along to here, where it can change direction and head upwards. Then we'll need to move the hay bale quickly from underneath the campfire to one block below, and this is the block that's going to be pushed around by the piston. We might briefly have to knock out a couple of the blocks of our chimney up here, but we're going to place the observer there. We can place the piston on this block here, and then a piece of redstone dust on top of here feeding into some sort of solid block should activate this piston whenever this redstone dust is activated by our chain of observers. We can test that quickly now by right clicking on this note block. There we go. The sticky piston shoves the hay bale up into place. And while you're right clicking on that again, we should be able to activate it and have the piston retract the hay bale. A couple of fixes to the chimney exterior later, and you'd never know from the outside that that mechanism was there. Except from the outside now, that column of smoke is rising a little more slowly. But what if I put my next batch of potatoes on to bake in our automatic furnace array? Once we pop the items into our chest minecart and send it along, once that furnace lights, there we go, we hear a chime from the note blocks and that should now have activated the campfire burning a little bit higher from the roof of our blacksmith's house. There we go, the smoke rises up into the air indicating that our automatic smelter is active, which is a really cool signal because once we notice that the campfire smoke is not rising that high, we know that our latest batch of automatic smelting has been completed. Of course, part of the reason I want to do that now is that Redstone mechanisms like this can be really difficult to retrofit into an already decorated interior. So it was really important that we tackle that before I decide on any of the fixtures and fittings inside of our blacksmith's house here. We now ideally want to conceal that behind a wall or some other kind of feature in order to make sure that it doesn't look really obvious that there is redstone circuitry going on inside the house. So we might want to consider starting the walls inside the blacksmith's house one block in front of all of this redstone wizardry and we'll make maybe wrap that around the side here so that the wall into the next area kind of lines up with the spruce pillars there. We'll want to do the same thing on this side as well, but on this side we have the functionality of these minecarts to consider. Do we want these to wrap around into the shop front area instead of having them just languish behind a wall here? Because otherwise we wouldn't really be able to get to them all that easily. Likewise, the levers that turn on and off the powered rails that send them on their way will also need to be visible or some other kind of substitute will need to be made to make sure that we can turn these minecarts on and off when we want to. And that's going to take a little more consideration. 
mission. So it's not a project I intend to tackle today, but maybe we'll get to it in a future episode or I'll do it on streams. There we go, our smelting is all done, the latest batch of food is all completed, and the piston has retracted that campfire, so it should be burning a little lower the next time we step outside. And the last wisps of smoke are disappearing into the air. Folks, I think that's where we'll leave it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at a bit of interior design, and when we do some building in future, we will definitely consider making the interiors look a little more lived in for houses like this. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care, and bye for now.